In this video, we're going to talk about unrestricted warfare. Now, you may have seen this book before. You may have even heard it called Doctrine before. It's not really Doctrine. It's actually a pretty good book when you read about it. You might have heard of Sun Tzu, The Art of War. This is the modern day version of it, but it's written by these goose stepping Chinese colonels in 1999. So I guess that's the, the difference. We're getting the modern day equivalent of Sun Tzu with this book. So this is all about the Chinese master plan to not only just destroy America, but to destroy the West and become the rising power in the 21st century. So you can get your copy of this book here on Amazon. You can see it's just a couple of bucks to buy that if you want. I'll put the links down in the description. You can get a PDF version of it as well. And again, I'll put that link down in the description. That's the free version of it. If you want to get it on Amazon and get the book version, you can get it there. Or you can listen to it on Audible. And this author here, Brigadier General Robert Spaulding, does a really good job of summarizing unrestricted warfare and what it's all about. It's actually pretty hard going when you're reading it because of the translation, the Mandarin translation and all those sorts of things. So the audio book's probably your best bet. So this video is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to be highlighting and calling out the Chinese Communist Party in their versions of unrestricted warfare. You may not realize it, but we are at war with China. And we've been at war with the Chinese Communist Party for some time. They're doing their very best to get on top of us and to crush us and to become the dominant power in the 21st century. And in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of that with the Chinese ambassador to Australia. So let's get started. I want to start off this video by giving you my version of what unrestricted warfare is based on my understanding of reading that book a couple of times and listening to that audio book several times as well. So here we have the so-called leader for life on the screen, Xi Jinping, and he's about to be re-elected for an unprecedented third term, and he wants to see China be the rising power of the 21st century. And I think they're well on their way to be doing that for a, a variety of different reasons, using a variety of different strategies and tactics. And unrestricted warfare is the thing that's underpinning absolutely everything that they're doing to become that rising power in the 21st century. So the premise of it is that warfare is not just happening in the air, on the land, or on sea anymore. We all know that it's also happening in cyberspace, and it's also happening in space. And when we talk about cyberspace, we're talking about all sorts of things related to hacking. And for the Chinese armies of digital soldiers going out there and attacking our infrastructure, attacking our businesses, attacking our governments, and then hacking our social media as well. What they call it, they call it non-contact warfare. And they take a leaf out of Sun Tzu's book. It's all about getting the enemy to do what you want without firing a single shot. And I've said it many times on this channel before, and I've said it many times just in my life, that the enemy, and particularly the Chinese enemy, are firing shots into our rear, dividing us. And when we're divided, we'll be much easier to conquer. So this is a version of unrestricted warfare. And today we're going to talk a little bit about re-education and how the Chinese foreign minister here in Australia is talking about Taiwanese needing to be re-educated. He doesn't really use those words so much, but if you read between the lines of what he's saying, he's trying to use diplomacy to get you to believe that what he's saying is okay. It's not okay. And the fundamental error that these communists make, and this idiot dictator on the screen here makes, is that no matter how many rules you impose, no matter how many wars you start, no matter how many threats you make, whether that's military, economic, or something else, you can never control somebody's mind. The communist ideology is fundamentally flawed in that it doesn't allow a human being to be a human being. Humans are naturally free creatures. We want to be free to come and go. We want to be free to think what we want. But the Chinese Communist Party will have you thinking the right way if you're thinking incorrectly. If you have sick thinking, which is what this idiot on the screen says, if you have sick thinking, then you'll need to be re-educated. And we'll have a little look at what re-education looks like in this video. All right, let's have a chuckle at this idiot Chinese foreign minister. Sorry, I just I'm on YouTube. I'm entitled to my opinion. I'm going to I'm going to call it out for what it is. This guy is an absolute fool. Remember the definition of a diplomat? It is somebody who is sent forward by their government to another country to lie on behalf 
of their government. And this guy is just lying through his teeth. I don't believe a thing that these Chinese say. I don't believe anything that it comes out of the mouth of a communist. And this guy is the mouthpiece of the Chinese Communist Party here in Australia. He might seem very polite. He might seem very eloquent. But make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, he is seeking to, to control you. And he is seeking to apply his communist dictatorship and his communist ideology on you. Um, your colleague, the uh, Chinese ambassador to France, told French media recently that when China takes over Taiwan, it will re-educate its 23 million people. Can you confirm with a yes or no, is that Chinese government policy? Uh, will China re-educate Taiwan's people to change their minds about the Chinese Communist Party? Well, thanks, Ben, for your question. But uh, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't read the, the news about my uh, colleague's uh, remarks on this particular issue. Uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, uh, given the situation that uh, 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 the people in Taiwan, I mean, the people in Taiwan are under a regional regime for many decades, it is uh, reasonable for us to understand that uh, their perspective about China, their uh, perspective about their motherland, uh, might take somewhat different views. I think uh, this is a, 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 a fact. Uh, but I think uh, the key point now is not about uh, the either education or re-education. Uh, the uh, 1.4 billion Chinese people, including uh, the 80 uh, million people in, uh, in Taiwan, are all, uh, all are Chinese. Yeah. So that they sounds are, like a yes. Is that a yes? It sounds like a what, yes. What do you mean by yes? That, that it is Chinese policy that they will need re-educating. Well, I'm not going to uh, speak on behalf of our ambassador uh, in France. I mean... I'm uh, just asking on a point of policy. The policy? On a point of policy. I haven't read about such a uh, official policy. But I think uh, my personal understanding is that uh, uh, once uh, Chinese, uh, uh, Taiwan is... Uh, 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 reunited, coming back to the motherland, there might be a process for the people in Taiwan to have a correct understanding of China Would that about be, their motherland. Along the lines of the camps that you have in Xinjiang, the education process in Xinjiang. Are we talking about a different topic? Well, that's a re-education process, isn't it? No, there's no. I, 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 uh, I would uh, rather not use the uh, word re-education. Uh, the people in Xinjiang are also uh, Chinese citizens, and they receive education in school, in colleges, in universities about China, about their motherland. Yeah, and this is pretty normal. Yeah, and this is pretty normal. Yeah, and this is pretty normal. Well, folks, this is how the Chinese Communist Party get you to comply. This is how they get you to comply with what they want you to do. They'll point at you, they'll threaten you with a baton, they'll threaten you with beanbag rounds, they'll threaten you with real live ammunition, and they will kill you. Look at this guy pointing a beanbag round. Look at this guy covered in all the right riot equipment, spraying people with pepper spray. Remember the umbrella revolution in Hong Kong? People have got short memories. For some reason, this has all fallen off the front pages of the news of mainstream media. But the Chinese Communist Party have got away with beating these people senselessly because they don't comply. It's absolutely unbelievable. Make no mistake, this is what the Chinese Communist Party want for you, for your country, and for Western civilization. And if you don't comply with what they want you to do, they will come after you and beat you like this. This is what they're going to do to you. This is what the future looks like unless we get together and resist this evil regime. Well, folks, you can probably tell by the tone of my voice that I've had just about enough of this CCP bullshit. This is unrestricted warfare. This is them taking the gloves off, doing whatever the hell they want to achieve their ends. And what we have to do is not sit idly by while freaks like this old man here in the picture tell us what we can and can't do, how we should or shouldn't think, and how they just lie through their teeth at every opportunity that they can to speak to other people. All they do is lie. 
communists lie, communists will seek to control your mind and to control your ideology. So why do you think that they're saying these things? Why do you think the Chinese ambassador to France is threatening to re-educate Taiwanese after we take it off? Well, it's Chinese policy. The white paper that's come out just recently, just just less than a month ago, comes out and says, for the first time, Beijing opens the possibility of an extended military occupation after unification, adding to fears that Taiwanese would be subjected to a re-education campaign. This is their policy. This is the policy that these people are going after. This is what the Chinese Communist Party stands for. They are not our friends. They are not our trading partners. They are the enemy of Western society. If you're not sure about what re-education looks like, let me direct you to a couple of links. I'll put these links down below so you can see this, ChinaAid.org. And this woman here is being re-educated. That's what re-educated education looks like, ladies and gentlemen. I'll let you read the story and I'll let you discover some of the torture that they put these people through in an effort to fix their sick thinking and their re-education. But what do you think would happen if you left that place and you imagine you survived it? Do you think that your thinking would be healthy? It wouldn't be sick anymore? Or would you resist harder? And that's the mistake of the communist ideology. They think that they can put you under duress. They can send you to war. They can kill you economically. They think that they can destroy every element of our society. And they may very well be able to do that, but you'll never be able to control our minds. So you'll never win. The communist ideology never wins because you can't control somebody's mind. I encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to have a look at this website. It's pretty cool. Um, So it talks about the detention system. It's a little bit old now. It's from 2019, 2020, but I'm certain that uh, all the same things still apply. If anything, it's probably accelerated. So here's the link up here. You can see that. I'll also pop that link down below in the description, and I'll let you explore this website in your time as well. I really encourage you to get behind these causes, get behind these websites, and share this information. And that's all I mean by encouraging you. I just encourage you to share this with other people and just educate yourself a little bit on what's really going on. Look, did you know that there was 380 facilities? Um, At the bottom of the page there, you can see here in the bottom left, it says download report. So there's a really good report that kind of outlines exactly what's going on. They have different levels and different tiers of detention facilities that are in there. So you can see tier one is lower security re-education camp. So lower lower threats, I guess, is what they're trying to say. And they have some nice models of what it would look like based off the Google Earth images that they're doing. So tier two, suspected uh, dedicated or dedication re-education camps. So that's what that camp looks like, or some of them look like. Detention centers. And then they also have maximum security prisons as well. And when you look here at the findings, what's going on here, the findings are saying that the the Chinese are contradicting themselves. And recently in the last couple of weeks, the UN have come out with a report saying how genocidal this is and how human rights are being encroached upon. So this is from 2019. This is all pre-COVID times. So if you look at the more up-to-date information from the last couple of months, you will see there's some pretty damning evidence against these people, and they're just in flat-out denial. Let me show you how much they're actually denying it. This is what unrestricted warfare looks like in practice. And what about in this current moment when we have Australia's reaction to the report about Xinjiang and what happened there? As I said, those words, torture, crimes against humanity. This is very unfortunate. The, you, the, the you report stand was alone not based in the on world facts. in relation to the UNHCR. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, to the High Commission on Refugees. Is it still possible for the improvement in relationships to continue with that stark dis- disagreement about Xinjiang? Well, I think we'll look, look at the two issues. One is the overall bilateral relation between our two countries. I've been keeping in touch and comparing us with our colleagues in DFAT and trying to see how we can move forward. We have a good momentum, but we need to keep the momentum. If we don't keep, keep the momentum, we might lose the momentum. We're just like uh, sailing against the torrent. Either we are moving forward or we are falling, behind, falling back. But for the question of uh, uh, the Xinjiang, as I said, uh, the, I don't want to get the debate into the detail because the report itself is a product of manipulation. It's 10,000 miles away from the truth. There's no sense uh, in it, of, uh, of truth in it. Uh, I hope that the Australian government would be, uh, would be serious 
to check against the facts before make uh, public statements. Well, as you can see, folks, as we close out this video, the Chinese are nothing but liars. A diplomat that's appointed by their country to go forward and do diplomacy in other countries is appointed to go forward and tell the lies of the government that it actually serves. And these communists are the worst liars on planet Earth. They are just awful people. I want to close out this video by just sharing some of the policy that the Chinese have in relation to nuclear weapons. And once again, I want to call out the hypocrisy and show you what unrestricted warfare actually means. Mostly, it means the Chinese saying one thing and doing something completely different. So their policy, so Xi Jinping policy on nuclear weapons, what is China's nuclear policy? Lots of people asking that in Google because it's one of the first results. So China undertakes not to use or threaten to use nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states or nuclear weapon free zones at any time under any circumstances. So it's very clear. That's what they've said in their policy. There's no ambiguity in that statement whatsoever. But last time I checked, last time I checked, Australia doesn't have nuclear weapons and we have no intention of acquiring nuclear weapons. But this is what China says. China's state media warns Australia could become a potential target for a nuclear strike due to the new AUKUS pact. So this is a little bit dated now. This is a while ago, 2021, about, or it's the 17th, so it's almost a year ago that that was actually said. But this shows you, ladies and gentlemen, what their policies are in relation to nuclear weapons. So that's what they're saying they're going to do, and that's what they're actually doing. People would argue that the uh, China state, Chinese state media are the ones saying it, not the Chinese government. But who do you think controls the Chinese state media? The Chinese government, the Communist Party controls them. So they're now threatening Australia to be a potential target for a nuclear strike. We don't even have nuclear submarines. They're not coming anywhere near us for at least 20 years. But they're still threatening us. That's the rhetoric and that's the sort of unrestricted warfare that we're facing. If you really want to find out what the Chinese policy on nuclear weapons and EMP actually is, I'll link a document down below that you can check out, written by Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. Rest in peace, he passed away recently. So check that document out, uh, ask your questions, have a look at this, share this video around, and just know, just know, ladies and gentlemen, that the Chinese Communist Party is not our trading partner. They are not our friends. They are the enemy of Western society. They are the enemy of Australia, and they are doing everything they possibly can to undermine our sovereignty and to take over and to become the totalitarian world leaders that they seek to be. And I find that absolutely disgusting, abhorrent, and there's no way that I would ever let something like that happen. If Chinese troops end up here in Australia, there's going to be absolute hell to pay. Hopefully the worst never comes to pass, and they'll be shown for what they truly are, which is just a paper tiger.